Well, guys, we want to welcome everybody. It is uh, three minutes after, and we always try to be very prompt, and we certainly want to be prompt today because it's, uh, when you can get an owner away from all the things that these guys do, I mean, it's, uh, I, I asked Jeff to get on our Zoom call, so Jeff Yates is with us this morning, and the, he's the chief financial officer. As a matter of fact, Jeff was one of the first owners that I met, Ken and myself and Todd, when we joined the company. And I don't want to build his head up too big, but he was one of the most, he was one of the ones I was the most impressed with because of just little things that he knew, the financial side of things. He was, and I like Jeff so much because he's so straight to the point. You're not going to get any, uh, he's not one of those get up front of the room and hype everything up. He's just kind of a, you can tell he's a, a numbers guy, I guess is the way to describe Jeff. But uh, guys, these Saturday morning calls, we try to switch them up each and every week. Sometimes we talk about the company, we talk about building. And uh, I believe we're going to have Dr. Ginger coming up pretty soon. I know a group of those up in Michigan. She's, we talked about her getting on and doing some product training as well. So just remember each and Saturday, each Saturday morning, fortunately now we got Ken that's going to be helping us on these as well. And, and Aaron Decker will be helping Todd and I as well. We're just going to make sure these Saturdays are full of information for us because we believe 2020 and that is a, it's odd that we've been talking about 2020 so much. I mean, it, but I really believe that our company has already started the momentum in the United States company has already been in a great position, but truth of the matter is, I think we're really starting to hit some new heights. And But for those that are new, and we have a lot of people that are, you know, people on this call have been here for several years, and we've got people on this call that have been here for just a few weeks. Because I look down, I, I see names I don't even recognize yet at this point. So, so guys, what we decided, what I wanted to do this Saturday, and uh, yes, this is being recorded. That's going to be the first thing. A bunch of people start chatting. They want to know if we can record this. And yes, I am going to record this because we've got people that couldn't be on that wanted to hear from Jeff. But we're very privileged to have uh, such a, a great group of owners. These guys travel so much. And when we started looking at Jeff's uh, schedule, literally, he was saying, well, I'm going to be in Shanghai or I'm going to be in Japan. I mean, started going down this list. He said, the one Saturday that I can do it, and I'm like, hey, I'll take whatever Saturday I can get. I think we booked this about five weeks ago. And so I'm sure he would rather be doing something else on his Saturday morning. But I assure you, we're excited to have you here, Jeff. And he is not only a founder of the company, partner in the company, he is the man who writes your checks. That's the best way to describe it. He is the man that makes sure we get paid. So from, we could say we have favorite owners. I assure you, on Fridays, this is my favorite owner. <laughs> so yesterday boarded, I was very, I'm always excited to see if, if Jeff made sure that we were paid. And I have been, Ken, and I would vouch for this, as Todd as well, so much, been here for a long time. We seem to always manage some ways to get be paid on time. So uh, since we have been here. So at any rate, Jeff, thank you for being on. I want to just start because so many people, you know, really don't know you. And uh, obviously since we started here with you, as I said, I'm going to tell a story on you. You may not remember this, but when we met you the very first time, Todd, myself, we were at the Bahama Breeze. I remembered we hadn't started the meeting yet. You may not remember this. I mentioned it to you when I was out the last visit. I said, I knew that you were serious about accounting when you had called the hotel. And I believe they had mischarged something like $8. I don't, <laughs> it wasn't much. I mean, it was like, there's three of you staying there and they had overcharged. You had this things and you got that eight dollars credited before we left and then we're talking about a company that's doing millions of dollars and this man's on the phone for 10 minutes before our meeting because the hotel had overcharged one of the rooms i'm not even sure if it was your room eight dollars and he probably never realized how big of an impact that made on me but i thought these guys this guy keeps up with the money <laughs> and that's a good guy I won't keep it up with my money he is on the phone for several minutes to make sure he got hit the $8 credited back. You remember that? You don't remember it, but I bet you do it all the time. So you're used to doing it, correct? Yeah, I, I, I actually don't remember that, but it's, I, I'm giggling because it, 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 it does sound right. <laughs> yeah, it sounds about right. <laughs> so Jeff, you know, in Ken and, and Todd, we, this is kind of an interview thing. This is very, you know, I, I didn't give you any agenda. I basically told you we no. just kind of talk about where the company. I said I'm not giving you an outline. That's not the way we do Saturday mornings. But I want you to start by telling people that, uh, if you don't mind, what prompted you guys to decide to to go out and I couldn't have done it. I want to be very honest. I know what you guys' salaries were, and we're talking about people making seven figure incomes, not six figure incomes. 
and some of them multi seven figures. I mean, we're not talking about barely seven figure incomes where somebody said they were making a million dollars a year as salaries and bonuses. We're talking some were even multi sevens and mm -hmm. I couldn't have done it. I don't mean to be, I, I don't know that I could have walked away and then take and literally risk everything. That's what you guys did. You risk your futures on what you wanted to do when you started this company. So can you, can you kind of just kind of, Give us a, a background of why you, Fred, Mark, you know, what y'all, what y'all's decision was to decide to start this company before we go further. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I, um, <clears throat> I, I think that the motivations were both um, uh, harmonious, but separate. And, and it maybe makes some sense to, to give you an idea what we were facing when we ultimately came to the conclusion, maybe we need to do something else. And, and I, um, I'm thinking back to the day um, about two years before we left USANA Health Sciences. And for those who don't know, um, Fred was the president, I was the chief financial officer, Mark was the chief sales officer, uh, Riley was the vice president of finance, and Ian was the president's assistant. Um, and having kind of come up through the company through customer service and sales. And uh, uh, we, we connected with Tim Sales. Uh, we recognized Tim Sales as an important force in the industry and so forth, and has, had established a relationship <clears throat> to, to hopefully <laughs> pull him out of retirement and, and endorse the company uh, wholeheartedly with his participation and, and start a new brand, a new line of products, because we felt like uh, in that company, we were too isolated and too narrow, too narrowly focused. And, and so um, uh, we did engage him. He actually had come and he moved to Salt Lake City to, to explore how to make the whole thing work. It was, it was going well and ultimately um, the majority owner of the company had decided that uh, unless it was all about him and his idea, it had no merit. Um, we had contemplated a variety of compensation opportunities. We had wanted to expand the brand offering. We had wanted to change the contracts uh, with the representatives around the world because we felt like the, the industry worldwide had had um, really stepped over its line uh, and, and boundaries and, and disregarded really the most important element and relationship in the industry. And that's the relationship between the company that provides logistics and the representatives that provide the face to the world. Um, so, so truthfully, years before we had left, we had contemplated and planned for and tried to implement the, the, the very ideas and principles that lay at the foundation of Rx and they were rejected, um, which, which was disheartening. And, and we kept trying to be team players and so forth. And, and ultimately, uh, because of failed commitments on the part of the owners between uh, them and Fred, same with Mark, um, the way they were responding to, to uh, company employees of race. Um, and ultimately, from my perspective, as I was sitting in a board meeting, having, having just delivered the financial results in 2010 and having uh, achieved all of the goals and objectives for the year, which for those of you who don't remember 10 years ago, was the worst recession in the world in decades. And all network marketing companies were down an average of 30%, some more, some a little bit less. Uh, we had navigated during that downturn to grow. And, um, and so we had generated over $250 million of personal value, um, equity value for the owner and uh, I proposed to pay a $3 million bonus across all 350 employees. So nobody got much, but 
um, it was meaningful. And at a time when nobody was paying bonuses because the industry was so far down and, and the owner slammed his hand on his desk and said he never intended for anybody to make money on this, but him. And, and I just said, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not able anymore to, to endorse and, 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 and continue to protect the world from a character of such, of such low integrity. And so we all had our personal motivations and ultimately in, in May, it was May 9th, 2011, we called the owner's son who was the CEO and met him um, near his house up in Park City, Utah <clears throat> and uh, resigned. Um, it was a difficult, difficult decision, but uh, felt like it was, it was, more important to do what we felt like was right than to do what we felt like um, was the trend. And, and so spent a lot of tough nights <laughs> and, uh, and kind of scrambled trying to figure out, okay, what is it then that we're going to do? And are we going to do it on our own? How are we going to do it? Are we going to, going to go somewhere else? I mean, what are we going to do? And, and it was, those were, frightening days, frankly. And, uh, and then ultimately on July 4th in 2011, we, uh, we had assembled five nutritional products and, and launched our eggs. <laughs> so, um, it was, uh, it was a gamble. It was a bet. Uh, it was, uh, an aspiration, but truly it was a vision that had evolved over the prior two years, trying to, to see if it would, take hold and without without a willingness and a and a vision to to take an idea that felt was important in the industry uh we knew it was disruptive but um you know looking back now nine years nine years later um didn't know how disruptive it would be and it's turned out that it's gone really well uh the the world has embraced a, a disruptive idea and, and has embraced the idea of transformation, um, not only at a macro level in the industry, but, but really at a very personal level, uh, which is the most rewarding part of, of what we're doing because the motivation was to fundamentally change <clears throat> what we offered to the world uh, through the model of a dis uh, direct selling company. And, and now we have eight brands, uh, you know, it won't be long before we have nine <laughs> and uh, won't be long before we're substantially larger than we are given a number of things that are on the, on the horizon for us. Um, we've got a whole variety of opportunities in different markets right now that I'm really excited about. In fact, I'm even refocusing some of my energy on a day-by-day -day basis to, to build opportunity of, of uh, creating wealth and new streams of income for you, um, to expand the reach and opportunity that is Rx worldwide. And, and all of those are laying down really, really well in our, in our path. And so it's, it's, uh, it's an exciting time and it feels like we're still brand new, but, um, at the meantime, we've got this momentum that is just very gratifying. And it's fun to go to, to places all around the world and seeing people embrace the Oryx um, uh, vision and hope, but really more importantly, to see a new hope that they feel inside themselves for their own lives. And if we've aided that or assisted that or prompted that or been a catalyst for that you know what I, i'm telling you it's a it's a fulfilling of a life mission not just a company mission and so uh really really grateful and and i'm, I'm telling you uh, of all the people in the world that i would love to be with um, i couldn't think of people uh, more importantly than all of you who've been so so precious to me over the last several years and uh, it's been it's been really um, uplifting to see your growth and your opportunities and your success and, and your struggles and, and fighting for the win. And I'm glad we're in the, 
I'm glad we're in the fight battle together. Well, one thing I want to say to you, Jeff, and also all the owners, and that is that you told us, uh, I've actually had Todd, heard Todd say this many times, you know, we joined here, I think the company was around the 14th, 15th month, I'm saying approximately at that time frame. So we've been here, we're coming up on our seventh year. Yeah. You, made us, you made us a lot of promises, told us what your visions were. And Ken Bailey's made this statement too. And we, you know, you not only kept every promise that you told us, you actually exceeded them. So I, I want to go oh, with my brother you. and say that those are the things. And, and, I, and the other thing that I want to make out is that so many people don't understand that uh, we may have the hardest working owners I don't think I don't know how I don't know how you guys do what you do. I mean, we make that comment. I know that you guys are. I don't know. How, you got to live on Rejuvenex. That's all I got to say. You must live on Rejuvenex <laughs> yeah, because yeah. without it, I don't think anybody could. Because you guys travel and you're in the you know the old saying was, you know, I'm not going to watch you guys do it. I'm going to be in the trenches with you. It's very true. So let's talk about the company's growth and, and let's talk about yeah. you know you do business in multiple countries. And what you see, you know, the company where we are now and where you see us in the next five years. Because we've always exceeded our goals, right? I mean, pretty much we've always. Yeah, we, ac we actually have. We've been very fortunate that way. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, uh, notwithstanding that, that trajectory, which I'm very happy about. And from a financial perspective and, and seeing the numbers, it's always been uh, very gratifying. I admit that completely. Uh, in our meetings with the owners, the seven of us, uh, we're most often quite disappointed, not in people, but in our ability to expand our reach more effectively. And we don't, there are a lot of things we don't do well. Fred and I were talking about it just the day before yesterday about things that, that we should be infinitely better at than we are right now. And, and so this, aspiration in this quest for for best in class uh hasn't diminished in nine years <laughs> so it's uh it's just constant <laughs> and uh and i say that because we have big plans um as i'm looking back over the years uh in our launch excuse me in our pre-launch period we uh, July to December of, of 2011, we did 6 million in sales, did 32, 43, 75, 112, uh, one, 150, 175, I think it was 178, something like that, um, 220, uh, Scott's finishing up the financials this year, I think we'll end up about 230. And uh, our growth rate was smaller during 2019 because of the trade war in China and, and the really um, volatile direct selling regulatory environment in China. Uh, China was about half of our global sales. It's a huge market, um, massive, and, uh, and for all the public direct selling companies like New Skin, Herbalife, Mary Kay, Tupperware, Avon, um, all of those, uh, China is about 50% of their sales also, in some cases approaching 60. So it's not unusual for a, a, a company that's global to be on balance about half in China because it's just so enormous. There's almost a billion and a half people there um and uh but the the economy and the regulatory environment and everything in that country has been um a, a challenge this last year <laughs> and so their sales dropped by uh depending on the month over the last 12 40 to 60 percent and so that notwithstanding, it would have been a, a down year for Oryx, but we're growing everywhere else in all of our other markets with dramatic increases in Europe and uh, in Japan and uh, with the addition of other uh, networks or companies that have joined the Oryx family, we had growth in, in a severely challenging year as well. So we're very happy about that. That said, um, we're targeting for 2020, uh, even without 
uh, much of a resurgent in, in China, somewhere in the range of 250 to 260. And so back into the growth patterns that we've had, and, and if China comes back strong, and we think it will, because we've got some indications right now that, that it's going to be a very positive year for China. It's not bad for a, for a start um, that like ours and, uh, you know, fairly new company in the industry uh, went from, uh, I guess it was in our third year ish uh, at, at about just breaking into the top 100 companies in the, in the world uh, now 57. So not bad for a little startup in, Salt Lake City that, you know, wanted to change the world. <laughs> so we're, we're pleased with that. Um, we, uh, we will probably merge, uh, or in other words, take on another company or two during 2020. We've got two that we're discussing with. Um, they're all in uh, non-disclosure agreements right now as we negotiate how they may join our group. Uh, we've got two gray companies that joined us in the last year. Uh, we have a new product line that we'll be announcing soon. I'm not going to say any more about that. What, is, what does he say? That, that's all I got to say about that, right? Um, and, uh, we won't tell. Uh, yeah, we won't tell, right? Tell me if you, you know, there's not I believe you. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I will tell you this. Um, it is the most requested products that that we get from our field worldwide. And so uh, we promised in the beginning that we would let our leadership worldwide drive the strategy of the company. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, and it, we're just continuing to try to keep that promise by, by developing... Um, not only the products, but the products at the quality and the efficacy and the cleanliness that that is really the hallmark of Rx with respect to its product strategy. And so, um, 2020 is going to be an exciting year. Uh, of course, we have our world reunion planned for Macau in the middle of March. We're crossing our fingers that we can do it. Uh, we heard that on Chinese New Year, which is today, um, in China there yesterday, but uh, that uh, all public activities in Macau were, were prohibited. Um, and so we're, <laughs> we're, we're hoping that, uh, that we can get on top of this uh, uh, concern about the virus that uh, is, is actually really frightening for the Chinese people. Um, so not only that they become safe and healthy, but that we have an opportunity to continue with our plans and gather our people together worldwide and, and, and have a really cool world reunion. And so hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll be there to see all that and, um, looking forward to some new projects in wealth management, uh, the area that I've been managing over the last couple of years, new investment opportunities, uh, and I mentioned, uh, kind of alluded to the idea that I'm focusing on some new lines of business that we'll introduce to the RX family uh, this year. Uh, new ways to advance and expand your wealth opportunities. Um, the machine that we've created avails us opportunities to, to, to expand the ways we can help you grow your business. Um, not only in the traditional lines, but you know, I'm counting on non-traditional lines. Uh, Rx, I think, is the only, if, if not the only, maybe one of the only that has a, a health plan that, you know, gratefully Terry Silkman has been <coughs> um, navigating through really uncharted waters. Nobody's ever gone there before. And things like that to, to create a stickiness in your business for your for your teams and people that you're recruiting and the investment program that we have is unique in the industry. I'm expanding that this year. Uh, we actually have some, some real estate opportunities that are outside the boundaries of the RX offices and so forth that I've been talking about recently, uh, just came up 
literally yesterday. <laughs> oh, you know, this is the, the, the reps are going to love this. <laughs> and so it's, it's just fun to create opportunity and, and to navigate through that with you. And so that's, that's a, a little peak on 2020 for us. You know, I think that that's one of the things people don't really gather is that uh, most ownership are not, I mean, I don't mean this to sound rude about most owners, I'm not saying all, they're really just trying to figure out how to make their company be more profitable and not figuring out ways to really do things with the reps. And I do have the new <clears throat> health coverage. Personally, I got it. I was a little skeptical about understanding it because I don't, I'm not a real good insurance person, but I can tell you right now, I've been very impressed with the way the customer services work and uh, it's been great. So, <clears throat> I think Ken's going to ask you some questions next. Yeah. First of all, Jeff, thanks for joining us. Uh, I know your time's valuable and it's on a Saturday and a big family and everything else going on besides with the business. And just want to echo real quick some a couple of things that uh, Chris has focused on. First of all, your work ethic. You guys work so hard and it's, it's uh, instead of just sitting there in your corner office, you're out there in the field helping us make it, make it work. And, and, and then one more thing too, uh, along the lines of stories, Chris was talking about the $8 deal. And guys, that's an indication of Jeff being very efficient, but he's also a big giver. And in my first experience, the very first time I met Jeff almost seven years ago, had him and uh, Riley Timmer in the car, Chris, and got my first feeding ticket in 20 years with, with the owners in the car the first time I met him. But here's what I share. The next day, Jeff gave me the money to cover that speeding ticket. So he's a giver as well as being very, very efficient. So I, I appreciate that. I was so worried that we were distracting you. Literally, people need to understand we're having this lovely conversation, driving down the highway, only car on the street. Literally, it was late at night. We'd finished the event. We were going back to the hotel. Nobody else was out there but one other vehicle. <laughs> going yeah. the opposite direction he tagged ken turned around i saw him flip his ue got after us and i thought oh shoot <laughs> i felt bad for ken i was like oh my gosh i just got caught for, for i got so embarrassed i was so embarrassed chris i got lost going back to the hotel after all <laughs> yeah, crazy, crazy. But i'm not a giver and a worker and he's put so much uh, sacrifice in away from his family and things like that for us. Uh, but one more thing I do want to ask if you could share. I think he stepped away for something. Yeah. I, I'm just grabbing my, my cord. I might, uh, <laughs> my laptop's going to die. <laughs> there we go. But if you would uh, maybe share with everybody, because we do have a lot of new people on the call, how RX's compensation plan, with you being the chief financial officer, how does our compensation plan compare to the rest of the industry? When we started Rx, we knew that we had to, to differentiate ourselves in a variety of ways, knowing that we were kind of labeled as the executive team of USANA Health Sciences, which had some positive. We were the most efficiently run network marketing company in the world, declared by Wall Street investors over and over and over again. Um, you know, we, we get how to run that thing, but we knew that, that we had to be different. Otherwise we'd be just like everybody else. And that wasn't very exciting. And so our brand strategy with our products, and you know that well now that I don't have to rehearse is, is fundamental to that. And having the highest quality is fundamental to that. But, uh, we, we had with us, <laughs> Uh, the brightest mind in network marketing compensation in the entire world. Um, and you can ask anybody that. It's not just a, I'm really proud of Fred Cooper, but he really is having done compensation plans for almost every network marketing company that has emerged as a meaningful organization in the world. He has consulted with them in their compensation programs. And we designed a, a plan that would be not only um, lucrative, and our target is uh, to, to provide 50% of sales, which would be the highest in the industry because it's 50% of dollars, not 50 or 60 or 80 or 70% of 
volume points, which is what most people claim, um, but actual real dollars. And we've done the analysis on every other network marketing company that has one that's profitable. <laughs> so you'll have some that, that aren't, that don't last very long, but, um, and we're the highest payout in the world, but that favors the kinds of behavior that grow businesses and per, that favors performance. Mm -hmm. And it gives us an opportunity to, to reward people quicker um, at the right levels so that your team stays strong. One of the biggest challenges of network marketing worldwide, not just with Rx, but with every company in the world, and this comes from the Direct Selling Association, is that people join and then they're gone within two and a half months. It's the worldwide statistic. Um, the average stay in a network marketing company is two and a half months. And so here's the math. If you could keep somebody, and really the masses, one more month, so instead of two, they go to three. That's a 50% retention rate, 50% improvement in the in retention rate. Your business grows 50% a year, right? And so the idea of things like a savings bonus and line bonuses and other rewards in the, in the comp plan are designed to keep people in your business, which is what helps you grow your business. And, and so the, the, the whole fabric of, of the compensation plan has these elements in it which are designed to improve retention, to maximize um, compensation, and to create opportunities. And then we attach um, utilities to it, like our e-wallet and our investment program and, and the foreign exchange capabilities and, and so forth, so that it all becomes a... Uh, a, a whole tool for you to manage your wealth um, and your and your income and your and your utility of your income. So it's functional, and you're not tied necessarily to what banks decide is your best interest because they really don't have it in their best interest. <laughs> and so um, it. Uh, it's unique in that way. And, and in fact, it's unique enough that we're actually patent pending. Um, we keep pushing the patent office to, to finalize our, our, our application. <laughs> and they keep thinking, well, you know, it's compensation, like nobody's doing it. And, and we're getting closer. Tyler just gave us the feedback that we're, we're probably on the final round, but, but it's in pending status. And so nobody can copy it, but um, it's unique and it's, rewarding and we have we have a an analysis that shows what everybody's compensation levels are relative to sales dollars and and right now we've been hovering at about 51 percent we're the highest in the world so you know that's good for you uh, and we're pleased by that because we feel like that relationship is the most important one that we have folks in case you missed that now nobody pays out more for a dollar sold than any, we pay out more per dollar sold than any other company in the world. And I'll also add, Jeff, it's fairly distributed. It's not like Tim Sales gets 80% of the pie and we got to share the other 20%. So nope. it's not only pays out the most, it's the most fairly distributed. And, and I just want to tell everybody, when you've got the best compensation plan in the world, with what we've already got in place, Jeff's already told you, more brands are coming. I can also tell you a simplified enrollment process is coming. And nobody in the country really knows about us, especially in the United States and Canada. So I just urge everybody to take advantage of what we got, Chris. And I appreciate Jeff so much for taking in Saturday to help us. Hey, Todd, are you still with us? I am, Chris. I am. I'm driving down the road. We had a fabulous meeting last night in Coleman, Alabama, and um, two ultimates, and I think four or five transformation packs there with a pastor's first meeting. I couldn't believe it. That's a sign of the, the real momentum hitting out here. Aaron just sent me a video of them watching Jeff. Uh, so there's over 100 people in Michigan. Hey, Michigan. They got a big group <laughs> Hey, there Michigan? <laughs> really? Um, there's people out in Michigan? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. There's a huge group. They got an all-day training up there today. So there's a big group watching on a big screen up there, Jeff. And, uh, so it's a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic, fantastic time to be rolling in the Arts Opportunity. And 
Jeff, just to echo um, what we've already said, you guys actually do so much. It, it creates a um, issue out here on the front lines trying to decide what's most important to tell somebody. Do we tell them that we have the highest payout uh, on the pay plan or do we tell them that our products are better quality? Do we tell them we can help them lose weight or we can put skincare on them? Do we, do we tell them we've got this travel program that you can stay in a hotel for at least 30% off anywhere you want to go? Do we tell them that you got an investment program? Do we tell them we got a loan program? Do we tell them we got health insurance? And uh, so you guys have done a fabulous job of putting this whole thing together. Uh, and, and Jeff, I always like in network marketing to talk a lot about the future. You, that's going to be my only question to you. Um, I always tell people that we're going to be the largest network marketing company ever. I firmly believe it. You're an owner. You may not be able to say it as strong as I do, but I think we'll be a $10 billion company at some point. And the great thing for everybody on this call is that you can be as big a percentage of that $10 billion as you want to be because we're still so young. But what, you mentioned next year's projection, but what is y'all's 5, 10, 15, 20 year projection? What is your transition when you guys get tired and old? Uh, kind of fill us in on the next 20, 30 years for those of us that want to live on the beach with a residual income. Yep, absolutely. Uh, I, there's actually three, three responses to you. First is, I, I, you know what? Choose what you like to tell people about because it is important about what's important to you. But what we want people to know is that they have within their power and within their reach with Oryx, the ability to transform their life. That's what we want. And that story then becomes the most powerful tool for them as they build their business. It repeats, it's duplicatable, it's, it's powerful. And it's, it's the key to success around the world in the world of Oryx because it is a, is a very powerful testimonial of what we can accomplish together. Second is um, to get to a billion, uh, we don't have a, a billion dollar goal. We have a $10 billion goal um, that would actually put us above Amway is the largest network marketing company in the world. They're about eight and some change um, as of not quite a year ago. Uh, but the point really isn't the $10 billion goal. The point is, is to try to reach every family on the planet somehow through the family of Oryx and, and the rest of that will come. Uh, I believe it'll take us five to seven years to break through our first billion. It could be quicker, depending on what happens in some of the markets that we're, we're actually entertaining right now. Um, we got a chance at that. Our ability to scale to get to that level is, is, uh, is actually very high. In fact, we're, we're able right now with the infrastructure that we've built to to be five at least five times larger than we are so we're we're ready and have the capacity to do that and and are looking to actually fill that capacity we have the plans to do so um and so so we honestly believe that we'll that we'll go there uh, because that's just how we're working um, I'm getting older. I, you know, your, your point is really well taken, Todd. Um, what is our plan to make sure that that engine continues to grow, notwithstanding the fact that we're, you know, we're, we're going to get old <laughs> the next 10 years. And, uh, well, we're taking our products and I'm, I'm 72 and I look like this. So I've got a good run going on. But um, no, I'm, I'm joking. I'm really actually, I'm only actually 38. But <coughs> I, um, uh, we actually this year have started to, to um, bring up, rise up the next, the next team of executives in arts. We've been working our bench for the last two years, so to speak. And so part of my focus as I move on to, to, uh, to drive new business opportunities, to expand the investment program, to create new 
wealth opportunities for our for our leaders around Oryx around the world, I'm turning over to Scott Schwendeman, my vice president of finance, the role of chief financial officer with the operating focus that he's now taking over. And so during this year, we're working together to make sure that he's going to fulfill all the accounting obligations, all the financial reporting, the tax return, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, the, the daily management of cash with Fred Bolingbroke, our, our uh, global treasurer. Uh, he's doing the mechanics of finance now so that I can focus on truly growing wealth in the model for our representatives. And, and um, Phil Lewis is, is now taking over the majority of the operating responsibilities from Fred and Riley. And so he's now emerging as a, an executive of the company with responsibility for those operations. Fred is, is now stepping back a bit to becoming more of a CEO in the role of leadership and strategic direction. Riley's doing the same thing, making sure that all of our, the, the, those fun, exciting elements of the business model that Todd mentioned are all refined to the degree that they run perfectly. Um, it's, a, it's a refined focus for us as executives. Deanna, the same. <coughs> Winhin is nurturing a CIO so that um, we can uptick the skill set that surrounds our infrastructure in IT. And we've got a guy that we've targeted who is amazing. <laughs> so good oh my gosh he's so good and um so we're building that now next level of executive leadership so that we can then become more strategic and and actually be more connected with the representatives worldwide because that's actually where our passion is and um and still drive that momentum well into the next decade so that we're not literally working daily on the grind, but we're working on the strategy because we have highly competent people delivering the, the operations of the company. And so that's already, Todd, underway. It's interesting that you ask about that because we just started those transitions January 1 of this year. And, and every day, Scott and I connect to make sure that he's understanding what level of expectation that I have for finance. And by the time he's fully responsible at that level, um, he'll be better than I am. There's no question because he brings stuff to the table that I never had. And so we're, we're looking to uptick or expand or advance uh, in a meaningful and powerful way the next wave of executive leadership at Rx so that we can focus on the representatives worldwide and creating new and more opportunities for them because you know what? It's actually what we do. <laughs> so we're really yeah, good at creating opportunities. I've heard you yeah. say that that's the part you enjoy. You enjoy the yeah. representatives. You really enjoy the relationship. I heard you say that in a video once is that what yeah. makes it special is that you really enjoy the relationships. And I think that sometimes that if you meet owners or companies, all they're interested in is their bottom line. They could really care less about their wealth base. I don't mean that in any disrespect. I'm not saying all companies are that way, but uh, we certainly. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, an inaccurate focus, <clears throat> because when you're doing that, you have a tendency to make really short-term decisions that benefit now, but really put you into a tight spot, um, it, in the future. And so for us, because of our experience in the industry for many, many years, we've, we've identified that the real focus of success happens to be in the relationship. And it happens to be in, in what you all are doing every day and enabling that force, that power, that capacity, and then trying to, trying to support it in which case our, our future and our trajectory is unlimited. And uh, frankly, um, we cash flowed positively in 13 months. 
Um, and so profitability, we believe, and we would stand as a testament of it because it's now happened for, for nine years. The profits just come. I mean, that's a natural consequence, not a focus. It's a consequence of having the right focus. And we believe it. And so we're convinced. People ask us all the time, um, how is it that you can remain profitable without focusing on your financials? And, and we look at them almost dumbfounded, like it's not that hard to figure out, but it just seems revolutionary to so many people. And so, which is why I think we've been successful in all of our mergers and acquisitions is that people figure out, oh, well, yeah, I get it. Now you focus on the right thing and everything else kind of comes together. And so um, I think, Todd, the, the most important uh, projection to our future and success is that we will not lose focus on what's most important in the model. And that's our representative. You got it, Jeff. We appreciate you. Thank you. Likewise. Well, guys, one of the things that we've got so many people asking questions, and I'm, we're not going to be able to do questions today. We've already gone, I've already kept Jeff longer than I told him I would. I, I told him, give me 30 to 40 minutes. We've already had him 50. The questions become, uh, there's so many in the chat room. So we'll address some of these questions at another time. But uh, Happy Jeff, to. I mean, I just, and, and send me an email, Chris, and I'll, I'll yeah. fire off a response. No problem. And we can get you back at another time and do this again yeah. and build a question Gladly. and answer. Uh, is the, how's the U.S.? How do we look? Is things changing? Is the U.S. improving? Do you see some growth in the United States in the last several months? Well, what's going on with the transformation packs over there, dudes? Honestly, hey, when I'm watching this video that. thinking, geez, you guys are killing it. <laughs> That's awesome. We believe that we've got something going on really good. As I told some of our group, I said, the one thing I love about RX executives, and Fred said this to me once, don't give me any hype. You guys don't build things around hype. Our ownership doesn't get up in front of the room and bounce. Well, Fred may bounce around a little. But yeah. it's not about <laughs> hype. Yeah. Jeff is one of those guys that's like, you know, you're not going to get this, you know, he's just going to be down to the facts, tell you the information, and it's just, just a matter of fact is what's going on. And our company, and so when we looked at some of those numbers, yes, we know we've got some good things to happen. And I really believe 2020 is the year for the United States, Canada, the North American region. So I know that uh, we reveal some of those numbers and we're very excited about, uh, we're working on those videos to improve over the next few weeks to really get ourselves where that uh, we think they can even do better. So any parting words for everybody, Jeff, and I'll let you go and we'll, we'll close our call out. Excellent. Thank you so much. It's so good to see y'all. Honestly, it's great to see you. Have a fabulous day today. And you know what? I'm looking forward to a great year for you. So seriously and honestly, anything I can do to help any one of you and all of you, really pleased to do it. My email is jeff at rx.com. It's easy to remember. Um, you can send me a text message. Uh, Chris has got my number. And so you know what? Please, please, please don't hesitate. Happy to connect and help in any way we can. Thank you so much, Jeff. We appreciate you being here so much. So guys, as we finish this up, I mean, a couple of things I want to just reiterate that obviously we believe 2020 is what's really going to really change things for us here. Uh, the, there were some people that asked some questions and we were, Jeff alluded to some of the things that are causing people to um, uh, retention. Some people ask about retention and, and we can get into those numbers. Let me say this, retention has to do with several things. I love the travel. I told Jeff how incredible the travel was. Uh, I had a rep last night, I'm on, he, he's actually on here, who didn't even understand the ARR credit yet. Found out last night as he was driving home, he had $1,700 to dump into his travel account in actual e-wallet money. He already had his reward <laughs> dollars, didn't even realize they were there. And I said, have you not even looked? And he said, I'm not sure I really understand AOR. He's doing really well, his name's Richard Hawkins. He's number 13 in the region right now. You know who he is. And uh, I'm like, yeah, let's go look and see what you got. He had $1,700 that he could spend right now on actual cash dollars and travel. And guys, many of you out there that don't understand your AOR, these are perks. This company puts, Todd and I talked about it. My goodness, the perks here are absolutely amazing. The, the AOR credits are amazing. The travel discounts are amazing. I'm, I'm too old to be worried about diamonds. I'm not buying Judy more diamonds. She's you know, been married almost 40 years, so she, I'm not that in the diamonds, but she's not hearing me say this. I'm, the doors are closed. But uh, <laughs> it really doesn't appeal to me that much. But I will tell you this, traveling free, 
and getting uh, those are kind of things that I really, I really, really love and uh, the reward dollars. So as we, as we go forward, uh, I know there's more and more things. Ken, is there anything you want to add to that? I mean, we may want to, you may want to congratulate you, but I should also, let me mention Richard Tuggle. I know that uh, Jeff, you've met Richard a couple of times. We're all going to be out there next month. Richard Tuggle uh, finished number eight in North America, even though he only started working his business in less than a year ago. Uh, but also was asked for 2020, and for those who don't know, he's going to be on the Partners Council for the year 2020 because of his growth. So we're excited to have him on our Partners Council. For those of you that don't know what the Partners Council is, RX truly has a group of people. They put on, a, you know, I've been on a, and with another company that told us we were on some kind of leadership council, but what it really meant was we got to get our input, but it didn't really mean anything. <laughs> it was just whatever the owner wanted to do anyway. So and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just the way things were. We went and we would give our input and the input was didn't really matter. It just made us feel like we were there. And then the, the dictatorship made the decision. Here, the <laughs> partners council truly, it's work to be on this partners council. We're just going to find out. It's not a simple task. You know, you're going to have to yeah. report. You're going to have to do certain things. There's a lot of information that they want, and you'll be you'll be called upon to be a part of that partners council to give input from the field. And y'all do partners councils in multiple countries, correct? That's correct. So every those, market has I think, a so I think people need to understand that really separate us is that. It, Jeff didn't brag enough on what the the fact that this company has the Bill of Rights and the things that these things are placed in for us to be able to build this. I love what he said. You know, we don't have a billion dollar vision. We have a ten billion dollar vision. And I'll be honest, seven years ago when I heard that, I'm like, yeah, all these owners talk about that kind of thing. I don't mean that in a rude way, but everybody's always telling you what they're going to do. Except in the six and a half, almost seven years, Todd, myself, and Ken, I think they would reiterate that everything that they told us everything that they told us they would do they were just in a few countries they just got a few things on they told us they were going to expand and now they have done those things they have as a matter of fact i believe you're way ahead of schedule what you promised <laughs> i think you would agree that your numbers are better than what you expected them to be at this point and uh the company's well on its way to becoming that billion and then five billion and then ten billion dollar company how far you know who knows what the, if you do people right you know what i've learned if you do people right and yeah. I heard you say this in a meeting and you, as, you know, I was out there with you and I was working on an acquisition, as you know, and you said it had to be a win-win. It didn't need to win just for me. You know, it, it, I, I thought that stuck with me that this has to win for the reps. It has to win for the company. If it's not good for the company that we're bringing over, if it's not a good fit, you're not looking for, and, uh, and I'm going to actually bring it up. I mean, th there was another company that you told us seven years ago when some, some friends of ours went to a different company uh, that that wasn't a good way they did that was bad and that's proven now we won't call the company's name but we know as we know as of last week that wasn't the best thing for them it worked out wrong because you said you never made a big deal about it but you said that's a bad act the way they're doing that is it's going to cost the company way too much money it's not good for the company and, and in the long term it's not good for the rep base and guess what we all know it, it played it, out that, didn't it <laughs> it well it took a few years <laughs> but I know that that's the case. Uh, we did have somebody ask a question. Do, is there a, a time frame when we think that we will be able to purchase the Lemu products through our back office other than the rewards? How, how far away? Yes. Is that? Um, I don't know the dates and that I apologize for because I, I, I know that the, there were a number of meetings that I was not in attendance at because I was traveling, but um, that full integration is imminent. I know that it's very, very close. Um, when we when we joined um, forces, we didn't want to throw too much um, at them too fast because merges in that kind of an environment often overwhelm people. And so we wanted to make the product available on a limited basis just to make sure that we weren't strapping their inventories and so forth. And so we've now taken over all the inventory production, but the um the integration of the full product lines and the integration of the compensation plan um into their model is all just pending right now and we're just our integration team is navigating through that but it won't be long um and so uh, i think probably the best thing to do chris would be send off a message to phil lewis and just present the idea that you're interested in better access and easier access and he'll give you the response on the timing 
You know, Jeff, I think the way I look at things right now, and I think every rep out here ought to be listening, this company is growing. The most important thing you can do right now is build your business in your own backyard in the areas you know. You guys know what you're doing. It's going to come. When, when Todd, myself, and several on here, and uh, Ken joined, you mentioned that you had those nutritional products, and that's it. And then you had the drops. They were just come out, the slenderized. We did not have MOA. We did not have any Joe Bay. Guys, build a core. Right now, build around what we have. Don't worry about what's coming and worry, worry about building your core right now because when that next product comes along, you'll reap benefits from it. I can assure you. I've got as many customers on MOA right now that wasn't even around that than is anything I've got. So yeah. I think sometimes we get to, we're going to wait till the next thing comes out or we're going to wait till something changes or we're going to wait till... Guys, don't be waiting right now. Build in your core group with what we have. And we have plenty available. Plenty available. So learn that there's great and products. Is, Chris, selling product is not easy. Selling yourself is really easy. And so get your transformation story. Absolutely. Losing weight, that's okay. If it's getting more healthy, that's great. If it's having better skin, that's great. If it's changing your financial picture, that's great. All of those transformations make perfect sense, but I'm telling you, it, uh, sell your transformation and people will want to follow you. <laughs> we Absolutely. see it happening every day, thousands and thousands and thousands of times. It's amazing how powerful that message is in the lives of people. So, just be thinking that, you know, and, and there'll be products that may not fit your market like others, but guys, there's, there's so right. much out there. You, you, you know, we're a growing young company and guys, and I always, because I got so many from Arkansas in here, I refer so much to Walmart. I can assure you they had lots of growing pains in the seventies. Yep. Nobody thinks about it anymore. Now they're the, the biggest retailer in the world and they've done, I mean, they're huge. I mean, I guess they, Amazon may have caught them past them, but my point yeah. is, is that if, you know, I never have to ask people, if you bought Walmart stock in the 70s, I don't need to know what month, I don't even need to know what year. I know you were a part of something that became gigantic. And right now, and I truly believe this, you're, that doesn't mean you'll get your share, but RX is in that company that is going to be, will become, I'm tied myself and Ken and others on here to believe you're gonna become a $10 billion company. That does not mean anything to you unless you go to work get your core started with what is available today. And as the company grows, your base will grow. I can assure you, it will continue to grow. Good things yep. will begin will be to happen. So anyway, Jeff, thank you so much for being on. We would like to have you back again. And I know we're getting tons of questions. I mean, I think this the chat room is blown up more with your call than anybody's we've ever had. So it's like, everybody wants to know what's going on. So. Put on a suit and tie for somebody. Said, that you look so good. <laughs> They're used to me and Todd in baseball caps and coaches' shirts, and now we got Jeff in a suit. Now, are you even got on pants or you got on boxer shorts? I do. I got pants on. Okay, just you must be going to another meeting. You must be leaving I'm, to go. I'm to all meeting. in, man. <laughs> all right, so you did good. I thought that that might be. A, I might catch you on that one. Yeah. No. I'm no. I'm gonna unmute all the lines, and so you guys can all thank Jeff for being on. I mean. Getting an owner with this guy's travel schedule is absolutely amazing. So y'all, uh, I'm gonna thank you, Jeff. You thank Jeff personally. Oh, thank you. Everybody's on thank you, Jeff. 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 Thank you, Jeff. Nice. Wonderful Great stuff. Week. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. What you do, what you have, done, what you're gonna do. Thanks. Hey, Jeff. Awesome. Hey, Ronnie. Good to see you. Take care. Looking for the turtles. What time is it? Hey, Jeff. Hey, Lucas, come here. This way. So exciting. Turtles are over there.